Bhutan is often described as the last Shangri-La because of its nature and spiritual allure in an effort to conserve its culture and natural beauty. The Trans-Bhutan Trail has a beautiful old world charm. While on the trail, you can enjoy the stunning landscapes and campsites. It's the towns that throw up the most stunning architecture in the Himalayas. The land of the Thunder Dragon is no casual name for a country to be known as, but Bhutan wears it with great significance. Bhutan is a beautiful and vibrant country located in the southern part of the Himalayan mountains. Beyond its association with the mystical dragon, Bhutan is widely known as the happiest country in the world, yet it has so many dark secrets that tourists have found intriguing. One may wonder what secrets have tourists discovered in this isolated nation that has kept them going back for more. Join us as we explore the happiest country in the world that lives in the dark, exposing the shocking truths behind the smile. Though many people want to be happy, you might be shocked to realize that Bhutan has a national policy that measures the happiness of its people. Bhutan holds the title of the world's happiest country because of its unique approach. It introduced and embraced Gross National Happiness GNH in 1972, making it a part of its constitution in 2008. This policy puts the maximum happiness and the psychological state of its people above everything else. This sets Bhutan apart from countries that still follow outdated models of happiness focused solely on economic factors like consumption and money. Bhutan's commitment to GNH ensures its citizens get what truly matters for long-term happiness, challenging conventional beliefs about what leads to a fulfilling life pushed by governments and corporations. Bhutan's happiness-first approach is flexible and adjusts to its needs. It invests in money if it contributes to happiness, but prioritizes other factors when money hinders happiness. This is just a tip of the iceberg. Stay tuned as we learn more about this captivating place. This focus has not only improved Bhutanese well-being, but also positioned Bhutan as a global leader and consultant in happiness. Many countries, including Canada, the United States, and the European Union, seek Bhutan's advice on enhancing their citizens' well-being. The GNH Index evaluates overall well-being and happiness using 33 indicators across nine domains, which are psychological well-being, health, education, time use, cultural diversity and resilience, good governance, community vitality, ecological diversity and resilience, and living standards. Constructed with the Alkaya Foster method, this tool is rigorous yet easy to understand. Since 2010, GNH has steadily risen for both males and females, with females showing faster growth in each period, suggesting progress towards gender equality. However, females still report lower GNH levels compared to males. This shows Bhutan's solid dedication to fostering a comprehensive environment for happiness and well-being, even amidst the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Another area where national happiness comes into play is how Bhutan makes modernization and cultural preservation coexist in harmony. The government of Bhutan actively promotes the preservation of traditional dress, language, music, and customs. These cultural elements are celebrated and integrated into daily life, ensuring that the Bhutanese identity remains strong and intact. This approach contributes significantly to the overall happiness and well-being of Bhutan's citizens. Unlike many other countries where people lament the loss of cultural values and diversity, Bhutanese citizens are able to embrace modernity while maintaining their cherished traditions. Did you know that the people of Bhutan follow the lunar calendar? That is, most Bhutanese do not have a record of their exact date of birth, nor do they celebrate individual birthdays. Instead, the first day of the Bhutanese New Year is considered as everyone's birthday. Bhutan has a more collectivist culture and does not place as much importance on individual achievements or celebrations. However, with the growing influence of Western culture and the widespread use of the Gregorian calendar, some Bhutanese, especially in urban areas, have begun to adopt the practice of celebrating individual birthdays on their actual date of birth. 
This country, which is the last standing Buddhist kingdom in the world, incorporates the dragon deeply into its national identity. The name originates from the wild and dramatic thunderstorms that frequently lash the valleys from the peaks of the Himalayas. The dazzling light of these storms was believed to be the fiery breath of a dragon. Similar to the bald eagle symbolizing freedom in the United States, the dragon in Bhutan signifies both enlightenment and the guardianship of Buddhist teachings. Revered as a crucial protector, this emblem adorns everything from the national flag to paintings on office buildings and homes throughout the country. It is home to approximately 4.3 million people who speak the primary language of Lhoka. In 1976, Bhutan officially joined the United Nations and has since become one of the most progressive and innovative members. It is hard to imagine that such a small country, the size of Indiana with the population of Alaska, accessible only by two airplanes, is the happiest country in the world. Now, we are going to look into more surprising facts about this nation. More surprising facts about Bhuta that will leave you wondering. A lot of people will be shocked to know the role marijuana plays in the farming practices of the country. For centuries, cannabis was largely overlooked by the Bhutanese people. It wasn't mentioned in ancient medical texts and was considered little more than a weed, used primarily for making bows for archery. This was unusual compared to neighboring Himalayan cultures, where cannabis has been extensively utilized for generations. However, in the 21st century, Bhutan began opening its doors to foreign influences and technologies, such as televisions. This exposure introduced the idea that cannabis be consumed for recreational purposes. One of the most surprising uses of cannabis in Bhutan is its role as pig fodder. Farmers in both eastern and western Bhutan have fed marijuana to their pigs. The local preference for fatty pork has driven this practice as marijuana-intoxicated pigs tend to sleep more and grow fatter at a quicker rate. It is believed that the meat from these pigs is tastier compared to those fed conventional fodder, although this practice has become less common over time. Cannabis grows wild across towns and villages in Bhutan, thriving without the need for special attention or the use of pesticides and fertilizers. This has been a significant advantage for Bhutanese farmers, allowing them to reduce their environmental footprint while benefiting from the plant's natural growth in the country's diverse climate. Beyond its use as pig feed, cannabis roots have found another valuable purpose in Bhutan. The long, fibrous roots of the marijuana plant are ideal for producing woven fabric known as bangpen. These fibers are strong and durable suitable for making ropes, sacks, prayer flags, and other textiles that hold cultural significance in Bhutanese daily life. The production of marijuana-based textiles helps Bhutan conserve foreign currency by reducing the need for fabric imports. This domestic industry not only supports local craftsmanship, but also aligns with environmentally friendly practices that protect Bhutan's breathtaking landscapes. While cannabis historically played a minor role in Bhutanese society, its usage has evolved significantly in recent years. From being predominantly used for pig fodder and in textile production, to being ingested as medications. The first ever cannabis-related arrest in the country wasn't made until 1989, when a man was prosecuted for smoking it. Bhutanese authorities have acknowledged a rise in drug use, prompting the country to join the United Nations Convention Against Illicit Traffic in Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act of 1988. By 2011, Bhutan's penal code had undergone revisions. Previously, cannabis use was categorized as a misdemeanor. To debunk speculation that cannabis is freely used in the country, it is important to note that the illegal use of this psychotropic substance is considered a misdemeanor. This means that individuals caught with cannabis for personal use may face imprisonment. Bhutan's ability to modernize while preserving its unique cultural traditions and values appears to be of key importance in the country's high levels of happiness and well-being. One aspect of Bhutan that may surprise visitors even more than feeding marijuana to pigs 
is the widespread presence of phallic symbols throughout the country. Keep watching, this is going to blow your mind. As strange as it may seem to foreigners, phallic worship has been a long-standing tradition in Bhutan. Scholars have traced its origin down to one man nicknamed the Divine Madman. This monk, whose actual name was Drukpa Quenli, hailed from Tibet and arrived in Bhutan to spread Buddhism in a rather unconventional manner. Renowned for his outrageous methods, he believed in offering enlightenment through unconventional means. The road to the Chimilakhang Temple follows through a village adorned with colorful phallic paintings on heritage-style houses. Also known as the Fertility Temple, Chimilakhang is a revered structure dedicated to Drukpa Quenli. It has an elegant design with a golden roof and prayer wheels lining its perimeter. Inside lies the original wooden phallus that Kunli brought from Tibet, decorated with a silver handle. Visitors from across the globe are drawn to the festival, surprised by the colorful parade where participants proudly display large phallic symbols, dance in extravagant costumes, and wear masks depicting foos. For tourists wishing to take home their own thunderbolt of flaming wisdom, a shop near the monastery sells a variety of phallic souvenirs in a different sizes and colors to suit every occasion. For this, some monks play traditional Tibetan instruments, while others, dressed in ornate costumes, perform dances with titles like the Dance of the Lords of Cremation Grounds. Dancers wear wooden masks that represent animals, deities, and manifestations of Guru Rinpoche. The masks may seem ugly to outsiders, but they hold deep meaning for the locals. These dances are a way of life, a respite from daily toils and sins. During the dances, the deities of tantric teachings are invoked. Their power and blessing help annihilate misfortunes, restoring peace and happiness. In between dances, the clowns, which are also called the Atsaras, interact with the crowd, livening up the festival with their wit and exaggerated movements. The Atsaras wear red wooden masks with prominent noses, mischievous grins, and large phalluses on top. Bhutan is proud to be not just carbon neutral, but carbon negative. This means Bhutan absorbs more carbon dioxide than it produces and Bhutan credits this achievement directly to policies inspired by the Gross National Happiness Index. Bhutan's path to becoming carbon negative is the result of several key policies. First, the country placed a ban on log exports, preserving its abundant forests. The constitution also mandates that at least a large area of Bhutan's land remain forested in perpetuity. Instead of relying on fossil fuels, Bhutan utilizes the free, clean electricity generated by its many rivers through hydropower. Exploring Bhutan's exceptional wildlife and natural wonders. The takin is Bhutan's national animal. It looks like a mix of a goat and a cow, which is why it has other names like Gnu goat and cattle chamois. In the wild, takins live in groups of around 20 animals, but older male takins may live alone. The male takins fight each other by hitting their heads together to show who is the strongest. Legend has it that the takin was created by the divine madman by combining the bones of a cow and a goat. Bhutan seems to house animals with mismatched body types. Another fascinating animal is the binturong, also known as the bear cat. This unique creature defies conventional categorization possessing traits of various animals while belonging to none. The Binturong has shaggy black fur, sometimes streaked with silver, and wiry whiskers that give it a wizardly appearance. Its face is a curious blend of weasel and teddy bear features, while its eyes seem to hold the deep wisdom of the forest. With a long, heavy body resting on short, sturdy legs, the Binturong's most distinctive feature is its tail. This powerful fifth limb allows the animal to grasp and balance on tree branches as it moves through the forest canopy. The Binturong can even sleep while hanging upside down, supported by its strong tail. Another quirky trait of the Binturong 
is its ability to rotate its rear paws 180 degrees, enabling it to climb down trees head first, a rare skill among mammals. The golden langur, or G's golden langur, is a species of monkey that can only be found in a very small area that includes parts of India and of Bhutan. It is considered sacred by lots of Himalayan people, and it was named after the naturalist Edward Pritchard G, who first described the animal during the 1950s. It is a herbivorous animal that feeds on fruits, seeds, flowers, buds, and leaves. It lives high in trees and in a group of around eight individuals. The mainland Ciro, a captivating member of the Ciro family, calls the mountain ranges of China, Southeast Asia, and the Himalayas its home. This medium-sized mammal, akin to a goat or antelope, stands out as the sole Ciro species found within the boundaries of Bhutan. Thriving in the seclusion of mountainous terrains, the mainland Ciro shies away from human presence, preferring to dwell in isolated areas at elevations up to 4,500 meters, 14,800 feet. You may spot this elusive creature either solitary or in small groups, as it navigates the rugged, elevated landscapes it calls its own. One other interesting animal is the barrel, also known as the blue sheep. It is a species of sheep native to Bhutan, China, Nepal, India, Pakistan, and Myanmar. In the Helan Mountains, there are 30,000 barrels with a density of 15 per square kilometer, the highest in the world. Many of these unique species are easily found in the different conservation complexes set up to preserve wildlife in Bhutan, one of which is Jigme Singye Wangchuk National Park. Covering 1,300 square kilometers, it is the second largest protected area in the kingdom. This park features a diverse landscape. The varying altitudes and rainfall create a wide range of habitats, supporting many species of plants, animals, and birds. It is particularly important for tigers, with 20% of Bhutan's tiger population found in the park's eastern side. The park serves as a crucial link between northern and southern tiger populations. Another part worthy to note is the Jigme Singye Wangchuk National Park. It remains one of the largest undisturbed forest tracts in the Himalayas, preserving a vital ecosystem. Jigme Singye Wangchuk National Park is a biodiversity hotspot, home to 391 bird species, including seven of the world's most endangered species. More than 260 of these majestic cranes visit Fobjika every year, arriving in late November. Thrumshingla National Park, situated in the heart of Bhutan, covers 768 square kilometers and was established in the 90s. This park boasts an unspoiled environment, with forests ranging from alpine to subtropical broadleaf and dramatic mountain landscapes. What surprised you the most about the way of life in Bhutan? Do you think the gross national happiness policy should be adopted worldwide? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. Also, click the next video on your screen to enjoy more exciting content.